before I became a character designer, creature makeup designer myself, in my household, there were kind of two um, examples of uh, 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 creative uh, 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 sort of geniuses. One, of course, was Dick Smith, and the other, my father had a familiarity somehow with uh, stop motion animator Ray Harryhausen. You know, when you're a little kid, you, you don't have any idea how any of these special effects are created, but what you do notice is design. Uh, and what I saw in Harryhausen's work was fantastical designs, non-anthropomorphic designs, because he wasn't dealing with uh, uh, the constraints of a, of a human body or human face. What I saw in Dick Smith's work was reality-based. Um, of course, because you're dealing with a, uh, a human face, you have the constraints of eye spacing, mouth placement, etc. cetera. Um, and it, in a way, makes the task more difficult because you have to uh, pull forth as much imagination as possible within that somewhat limited palette. And I think that is what Dick's work always uh, excelled at, was uh, his, his design sense. He was able to create designs that were at the same time fanciful and realistic. I, it wasn't until I was a teenager that I realized that uh, much of Dick's work is invisible in films, and you'll see that tonight in The Exorcist with the uh, the Father Marin work. Fifty percent of the makeup in the in the show goes unnoticed because it's so effective. He he made Max von Sydow look then kind of like he looks now. What Dick manages to do is deftly blend reality and fantasy, and to unsettling effect. And never is it more unsettling than uh, in the Reagan makeup. What he shows us with this makeup is the story of the film, which is a struggle between good and evil, where the battlefield is a young child's body. When it came out, I was in junior high, and there was, a, a, you know, everyone was talking about it. Reviewers were talking about it. Kids were talking about it. And uh, kids would say to me, hey, do you want to go see it? We can sneak in, or my big brother will get you. We will. And I remember thinking, screw that. This movie is dangerous. <laughs> and, and it still feels dangerous, even now, by today's standards. And I think the reason that it does is that, well, of course, it's a great film, and it's a team effort, right? It's, it's a combination of the, of the actor, the director, the writer, the cinematographer. Um, but if it weren't for what Dick did, if it weren't for his design, uh, it, there would be no movie. And if you look at his design, uh, his tests, you see that he kind of um, explored some more beauty-based makeups before he landed on the iconic, raw, psychologically horrifying makeup that he ended up doing. And I, and I think that's part of what makes a makeup artist, a character designer, great, is that uh, he understood the intent of the film and he uh, doggedly pursued it until he got us there. And the reason that I still feel the word dangerous comes to my mind is that, uh, is that this film takes you to places that are not safe. And it is the genius of his design uh, bringing out the story in the face of the little girl. You look at Reagan and you clearly see the story. Uh, he subtly has structurally changed her face to show the evil that's within her, but yet he gives her lacerations and open sores that show the toll that it's taking on her young body. So she, wasn't, she was not the physical embodiment of a demon. She's a child with a demon inside her, an evil force inside her that is changing her. So you have to feel that, there's, that the child is at risk, otherwise the movie doesn't work. If she just became a scaly, you know, dare I say it, CGI creature, you would not be invested in the film anymore. So, but I wanted to say thank you again for allowing me to be here, and thank you, Dick, for all of your inspirational work, and congratulations, everything, you deserve it.